And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. When I was at the Fantasy Flight program this summer, when that was at their, where they announced all their new games that were coming out, and they said the words Warhammer Quest, I was very excited. Then they said Adventure Card Game, and it was like deflating a balloon for me. I was like, huh, okay. I mean, I liked Warhammer Quest, which was like an upgrade of Advanced Hero Quest, which was an upgrade of Hero Quest. I liked the idea of going through a dungeon and doing missions. Oh, I love these things. I mean, Descent has handled that for me in recent years, but still, uh, to see Warhammer Quest come back with this Skaven, oh, was such a cool idea. So, card game, I was like, oh, another card game. And, I mean, Fantasy Flight does pump out a lot of card games. So, I was kind of, eh... Kind of like that with this card game, but I'm certainly willing to give it a try, especially since it's a cooperative game. Let's see. When playing this game, you're going to pick a scenario, and so the scenario here um, there's two sides. One is the setup, and it tells you what monsters and locations you're going to need. It tells you also reward and penalty, and there's a story involved with this. Then this is the side you'll actually be playing the game in. At the end of every round, you're going to move this token, and when it gets to certain colors on here, special events will happen on the quest. And so it will tell you what happens, and then again, it tells you what to read, and so on when you win or when you lose the quest. Now, each person is going to pick one of four heroes. We have the Warrior Priest, we have the Way Watcher, we have the Bright Wizard, and we have the Iron Breaker. Now, each of these characters comes with multiple cards, and the card that you pick is going to depend on how many players are in the game. So this one here with 25 hit points is two players, 17 hit points with three, 13 hit points with four. Also, if you play with two players, this guy gets an action, two actions every turn. This guy here gets an action if he is the party leader. One player is going to be the party leader of each round. So in a three-player game, one player is going to go twice each round. Now, when it's your turn to go, depending on how many actions you have, you are going to activate these cards. Each player has four action cards that they're going to be playing. However, throughout the course of the game, you are constantly going to be coming into engagements with enemies. So there might be a giant bat that I'm fighting against here for whatever reason. So let's, I'm going to pick one of these. So let's say I pick Explore. To do Explore, you'll see that the card there shows two dice. So I'm going to be rolling two white dice to do an Explore action, but I also always roll a black die. So I roll these three dice to do the Explore action. Uh, each axe on a die is a success, so I did two successes on the Explore action. However, one of my enemies is going to hit me. However, I rolled a shield that blocks that enemy, so he does not hit me. Let's show some other results here. This time, I also got two successes, but the enemy is going to hit me, and I'm going to take damage. And then, so each card is going to allow you to do something very specific. Each player has one card that is going to be an attack. So this one says you can engage an enemy. There is an area in the middle of the table called the shadow, so you can bring an enemy in and you fight against that enemy or even an enemy someone else is fighting. Then I get the attack roll, and it says before this action, you can exhaust another action to target one additional enemy, and it gives you an extra success. When you are attacking, each success you roll is basically one damage. Some enemies can absorb damage like a shield, but for the most part, you're able to do damage to the enemies by using the attack. Aid is going to let you roll dice to help somebody else. When you help somebody else, you're going to be giving, for each success, you're going to be giving them these tokens. They can place these tokens on the different cards that they have, and in the future, when they take that specific action, before they roll the dice, they can spend these tokens to get additional successes. This guy also lets the other person ready one of their actions. So basically, when you're done, you exhaust an action, and this lets them ready one back. And it says you and the target hero each recover one uh, damage. Well, that's good. Then we have the rest action. Uh, when you rest for each success that you roll, 
you are going to be healing a hit point. And then you can choose another hero. That hero becomes empowered. Uh, empowered basically gives benefits to the other person. And then you ready all your actions. And I'm going to come back to this because this is important. And then explore. Actually, I will, uh, let's, let's deal with that now. When you, each character has the same four things. They have attack and um, the uh, aiding and resting and exploring. When you do these different actions, you will exhaust the card. Each player has one of their actions, lets you ready the rest of them. So, for example, this guy here is going to have to do a lot of resting. While the elf archer, she, her attack card is the one that basically untaps all the rest of them. So you're, you, there's other ways to untap cards. You see his aid can let you ready an action. But essentially, this card here is going to be the one, you see the symbol down here, that he'll be having to use so that he can use other actions in the future. Remember, whenever you use one of these cards, you're also going to roll one black die up to three because you can be engaged with three enemies for each enemy that you're fighting. So the more enemies you're fighting, the more dangerous it is to do your actions. The explore action is going to let you go into different areas like the winding tunnels or the confounding stairs or the lost dwarven forge. You'll notice there's different numbers up here. Those are because you're going to be putting random locations depending on what scenario it is. To get through a scenario, you're going to need to explore it that many times. Successes on explorers are going to let you put tokens on these to show how far you've gotten through. So we have four here to get through. We need ten. When you get ten, you'll go to the next room. When you get to a room, there's going to be a number of monsters that are going to attack the characters. They're like dealt around the table and then a certain number of monsters that are placed in the wings. And other monsters might have a way that might show up. So each player is going to use the different actions that they have and then monsters are going to attack. Then the location is going to occur, um, whatever the location might say. So for example here, the enemy party rolls one enemy die and if he rolls the wound, he suffers one hit point and becomes bleeding, which is a negative status. And so you want to probably get out of the orc battlements as quickly as you can, but it's going to take 10 to get through them. When you get through the last location, usually that's one of the th triggers to the end of the scenario, but there might be other things going on too. Now over the course of the game, you're going to come across different types of enemies. These enemies come in two types. There's a regular and then there's an elite enemy. And the scenario will tell you to put in a certain number of enemies. You're going to be making a pool of enemies. These enemies are going to be attacking you. They also have a certain number of hit points. Sometimes they have armor that you have to go through. For example, this clan rat here has one armor, so when you hit him, you'll have to hit him more than once to do any damage to him. When it's the enemy's turn, they're going to do something against you. Advance means they'll come and move to, towards an enemy from the shadows. Advance, this guy advances and inflicts his damage on people. Sometimes prey they'll have, which means they go after the person who has the most hit points. Um, and there's all different types. Sometimes we'll say something like, this wolf here has a lacerate. It tells you right on the card. If this enemy is engaged with you, you become bleeding. Or this gigantic spider has ensnare, which if he comes, if he's in the shadows, then the player has to exhaust one of their actions. Or this guy has skirmish. So the abilities are listed right on the card, and there's lots of different enemies, and there's enemies of different types. Some enemies are big, smashing monster enemies, and when you roll the special symbol on the enemy die, if they're engaged with you, their special ability is going to go off. So you're going to have to deal with these enemies to get through each round. There's also a deck of dungeon cards. Whenever you explore, there's a chance to get, find one of these. These can be special events or things that you can keep that will help you. Sometimes they're negative. Sometimes they're positive. Sometimes, oh, there's a healing potion. And sometimes they're a chest, which will let you draw from this pile here, which can give you different things. There's a pistol. And here is a crossbow. And as the game goes by, you will, in, you will change this deck up a little bit, and you might come across a legendary fortune. When that happens, you will find your character's cards, and you're going to pick one of these special weapons, like the Hammer of Faith for my priest here. During my attack action, I get an extra shield for each enemy engaged with you. Before your activation, you can choose a hero. That hero claims one of these symbols here. Here, the Book of Prayers, after your rest action, you may choose one hero. That hero can recover two hit points or discard one condition. So there's some good benefits, and it's kind of neat because when you find the Legendary Fortune, you're finding something that is specifically good for you. 
Now, when you finish a quest, there's a reward or a disadvantage to winning it or losing it, but players are also going to be able to upgrade their characters. One of the ways they can upgrade their characters is they can go to the blacksmith and draw two cards and keep one. Players are only allowed to equip one card. They can also, for one of their upgrades, take one of their cards, uh, to be, have the ability basically to uh, carry two equipment cards so that you can up the number of cards you can have. Or, and this is my favorite one, replace one of their actions with an advanced action of the same type. Like, for example here, she is Deadly Shot. That lets her engage an enemy, gives her a ranged attack of one die, and if she defeats an enemy, he'll hit points and ready all your actions. That's pretty good, but if we can upgrade that action to the Wrath of the Woods, where she can engage an enemy, she has two dice. Before this action, you can target up to two enemies. During this action, if you defeat at least one enemy, recover two hit points. That's pretty good. Just like her, her aim here, or aid, on the Shadow Watch. The Shadow Watch, it lets you have two dice, it lets someone else ready an action, and you can choose an enemy engaged with the target, and that enemy will suffer a hit point. Well, Hail of Arrows changes that to three. Target hero can ready an action, and you can choose up the two enemies, and each of them takes one hit point. So you can upgrade these actions, and you can't pick the same thing twice, but by the time you get to the final quest, you can have all your advanced actions. There are five quests included with the game. I'm sorry, there are actually six quests included with the game. They are numbered in order. You go through them. Sometimes a nemesis from one of these uh, will run away and come back and possibly fight you as just in the middle of another quest. And there's different things that are going to happen depending on this track here. You can win or lose. You could even skip ahead to a later quest. You can just give yourself basically upgrades to match where that quest is. You don't have to play through the whole thing as one big quest, but that's a little bit of how the game works. I have to say that I'm su I was surprised here, okay? Fantasy Flight makes a lot of these card games with text and things, and I'm like, okay, let's try this one out. I was really, really impressed with how clean this system is, how well it, it plays, how well it, uh, the number of players, it goes from two to four, does an excellent job in that regard. It was just really excellent all around. Um, a very good product and in a small box. Now, I am not convinced that this is the same feel as Warhammer Quest, but for a card game, it comes pretty close. You don't need to have any kind of dungeon master here. The quests are pretty interesting. The way the characters, the monsters move around, I've, I found it very fascinating. But I think my favorite part is just how the four actions work. See, I'm a big fan of cooperative games in which you are actually cooperating. This is definitely one of those. It has an aid action. You really need to use that aid action to help other people out. Here, I'm helping you. You can't aid yourself with these aid actions. So there's constantly this, here, I'll do this for you. And then now, then now I pile drive them. Now I'll help you. And I also like that each person has a specific action which resets the rest. So one person's good at resting. One person's good at aiding. One person's good at attacking. One person's good at exploring. You have to explore at the same time you're fighting these monsters. Each monster will be dealt with a little bit differently, like the spider retreats and then shoots you with a web. So you need to pull in the spider and kill it. You want to explore and get out of that room, but you, some of the monsters are going to come along with you, but not all of them. So maybe it's better to explore, but sometimes it might be better just to wipe them out but at the same time, you're watching your time thing tick by, the game just really works well. Now, it is not easy. It's quite difficult, which again is fine. I also, I'm not sold on this being a campaign game. This is not the kind of game I feel that I wanna play through a campaign. I'd rather play one and put the game away. I mean, the rule book does come at the back of the rule book with a sheet where you can keep track of your campaign and things, and that's fine. I'd rather look at it as, hey, there's six different missions you can play here. We'll go through and let's upgrade some of the stuff and go into it because, hey, we get to use this advanced stuff. Even though I'm not as keen on the missions, I will say when I finished the first mission, I was like, oh, let's play it again because I can upgrade and I love, I love to upgrade. Okay, and the upgrading is really neat. Each character has a very distinct, different feel. It's cool seeing some of the Warhammer stuff, the Skaven and the Orcs and the Goblins and the Spiders show up and you get to fight them. It's really cool that you have your own unique weapons that you can get. The game does a really good job at slowly integrating different things. There's a tutorial game in the book 
that you can play through. It's really boring uh, if you look at it just as a game, but it kind of, you go into one room, you fight the monsters, and you're like, oh, so that's how the game works. Yeah, that's how the game works, and it's a good way of teaching the game, and then you go in there and start using things. There's a bit of a puzzle to it, but there's also dice chucking, which I like, and... <laughs> It has a symbol on the white dice that when you roll this, it gives you a success and then you can roll the die again. Ah, that burst mechanism. Now you guys know, if you watch my videos, that is my favorite mechanism probably in a game. I love it. You, can, you might say there's no chance I'll ever beat this guy, but you roll and you roll and you roll again and you get super lucky. So there's some cool moments in the game, some great cries of joy when you really beat someone or when you aid someone or when you rest like a maniac. <laughs> Attacking isn't the only thing in this game. The exploration is cool. You're never sure what you'll find on the cards. I can see how this game would be expanded, but without that expansion, I think you get a lot of game in this box. This is one I, I have, again, I just was not expecting much. I was like, oh, a card game version, let's play it. And I turned out very, very impressed with this one. Um, this one for me has some similar feel to both Blood Rage, uh, not Blood Rage, um, this, the, the uh, Blood Angel card game, the Warhammer card game that Fantasy Flight put out, and the Lord of the Rings card game that they put out. Now, I've not played Lord of the Rings with all of its expansions, and I'm sure it's a very intricate, detailed game. I don't want it to play a cooperative deck builder. I don't, I don't want all those expansions. I just wanted the base game. But for me, this replaces that. It has a very similar feel, and I like this one better. I like the theme in this one better. I like Lord of the Rings, but this one just felt like a cooler co-op game. I also like it better than the Space Angels, the... Um, card game because again this this seemed like it had more to do I sat there and said well what am I gonna do this turn what actions am I gonna do who am I gonna help lots of table talk involved in the game so hey big thumbs up for me I'm always glad to be impressed by these type of games Warhammer Quest the adventure card game is actually good Dice Tower Judgment excellent Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.